In this House of Logic video, we're going to upgrade a Proxmox node from version 8 to version 9. Um, now, what I would suggest you do if you're going to go through and do this is you make sure you have a thorough read through of the documentation on um, the Proxmox.com website. And um, within here, um, my advice would be, first of all, uh, make sure you do follow all the, um, the uh, suggestions regarding uh, backups and making sure you haven't got any uh, running machines on the node you're upgrading. Um, and then what you want to be doing um, is you want to go through uh, the list of commands that you're going to run. And I would suggest that as you as you go down this list, so there's some pre-flight checks effectively, and then there's some upgrade commands. Um, when you get down to this section here regarding the package repositories, most of the work you will do um, if you've got a fairly straightforward upgrade, I believe, would uh, be in here. Now, there's two sets of options here. One is for the enterprise version and one is for the no subscription. So I would suggest that actually what you do is you actually go and copy those out into a list of commands that you are intending to run. Now, my environment here is actually a nested environment. So um, the other point that's made here is um, to make sure that when you run the commands, as it says, don't do it through SSH. Uh, the first set of commands you can run through SSH, but when it comes to the actual distro upgrade, um, the dist upgrade command here, this is the point at which you need to be doing it via a console connection effectively. So diving straight in, what we'll do is we will go and open a console um, session through to um, the node that we're going to upgrade, or the shell session here, I should say, and that gets us straight in. So what you'll find um, in the commands, if you don't have um, the full um, or the correct version of Proxmox 8.4, is that if you try and run the, um, the PVE 8 to 9 command, it will just say not found. So what you need to do before all of that is you basically need to go and get yourself onto the most recent version. So if we just chuck in the apt update and the dist upgrade commands, that will go through and upgrade us from version 8.4.1 in this case through to 8.4.11. So we're going to hit yes to accept and let it go and get on with that. Okay, so the upgrade from um, 8.4.1 to 8.4.11 is now complete. And in fact, if we go over to the web browser here, we can hit refresh and you can see the update has taken place there. So there's actually no need to up um, to reboot as far as I'm aware between um, the 8.4.1 and the 4.11. Um, but let's just get that back on screen again. Okay, so then what you want to be doing is you want to be um, going to update the packages. Now, um, the uh, trick to doing this, as I said, is you can copy out the commands from the web page and it actually makes it a lot easier. So we're going to update um, the uh, bookworm to Trixie um, using said there and then we're going to go and create a new format package listing. So let's pop that in there. Um, so then we have to do apt update to check that that's okay. And apt policy, so let that run through. Okay, so it's uh, it's not it's got a few warnings, but it's not giving me any major complaints. So that's all looking good. Um, and then it's actually telling you to go and remove the reference to bookworm from your sources list on the web page. So that's just going to be done like this. In fact, do we have, uh, no, in fact, it tells us to remove the no subscription reference. Let me just double check that. So after you've added the new enterprise um, repository, um, it says you can remove the old etc. sources list. Um, yeah. I know it's down here, sorry, the apt uh, sources list uh, or other dot list file you may have and run app update and policy to make sure it has been removed. So let's just go back to here. I think that'll do it. That's security updates, but let's go with it. And And app policy again. Okay, cool. Right, so um, the next step, um, you can, you're then going to do the same for Ceph effectively. Um, so I am using Ceph in this environment. So it is basically the same style stuff again. Uh, 
and then we're going to do at update. Whoops. And apt policy. Again, no complaints there. So we will go and remove the uh, sources list.d, ceph.list file as suggested. So we'll quickly do that. OK, and then we can do once again, do an apt update. And apt policy. OK, all good. Now, um, what you want to do at this point is obviously it has run update and this is where you would go and run the dist upgrade command. Now, it's recommended not to do this from SSH, as I said earlier. So what we'll do, um, we're going to exit out of that um, shell window. And because this is a nested environment, which um, gives us the advantage of being able to easily screen record it, we're going to go in on the console session here for the PVE one node. And we have got to do at dist upgrade. And that should get us going. As you can see, there's quite a lot to be downloaded. So we're going to hit yes to confirm. I'm going to then um, make use of pausing uh, the recording and we'll pick up whenever there is any interaction. OK, so we have a list of changes um, that um, we're being warned about. We have to scroll all the way down through these. Uh, it's a fairly long list. And then when you get to the bottom, you basically acknowledge or quit out of this bit of information. I just realized I forgot to do the 8 to 9 upgrade check. Um, but we will do that one at the end. There we go. So we quit out of that. Okay, so now we're going to confirm our keyboard language, which is UK English. And um, we're into the yes, no's uh, section. So we're going to basically take the defaults on each of these and let it run through. Restart services, yep, we are going to say yes. And that's going to take a little bit of time now to run through. OK, so while I've been waiting for the uh, PVE1 node here to uh, to actually upgrade to uh, 9 and carry on with the prompting process, um, what I should have done beforehand is actually uh, run this command on, uh, on it before I started, which is PVE829. So I'm running this on uh, the, the node 2, PVE2. And this will run a full list of the actual tests. And you can't run this unless you're on um, the um, the version 8.4.11 or, or thereabouts, I believe. Um, so that's actually just giving me some warnings about Intel microcode. Um, and um, so there's some other stuff recommended to prevent rebalancing. OK, so some Ceph warnings. Um, yeah, so I've got Ceph warnings basically because the storage is too slow because this is a, a nested cluster. And um, so, yeah, you want to be running uh, the uh, the PVA 8 to 9 tool, um, which won't even be available until you get um, onto the most recent um, Proxmox 8 versions. Um, so um, I will um, re-pause the recording and uh, then have a look at uh, PVA 1 again in a second. OK, so uh, PVE1 um, on the uh, the package upgrade has just got to the point when it's asking me about um, the LVM config. Um, we're going to actually, well, we're going to go with the defaults on this one. Um, so let's let that go through. I think there might be one or two other prompts at this point, but we're at 98% completion here. OK, so it's now complaining about the uh, the EFI system partition. I believe that's because I may well be on bog standard uh, BIOS because um, this is an older um, older host. So, um, yeah, that has uh, finished and we can actually do PVE 8 to 9 here and we'll do it with full again. So obviously this is on a different host to um, what I just demonstrated. And this will say what it thinks is the uh, the state of it post upgrade
Okay, so there's there's three warnings here. Um, okay, well, that's uh, there's no failures, so it's all looking good. Uh, and what we can do now is we can do a, a reboot. Let me just check the uh, details here quickly. Um, so yeah, re reboot for um, for kernel update. So nothing else to do at this point. And then we will see if we are in um, Proxmox 9. Okay, so that has uh, completed and we can see we've got to the, uh, the login prompt on the console again. And we can now check the Proxmox version, assuming I've managed to successfully log in, which I have. PVE version. You can tell this is nested for sometimes because it doesn't respond very quickly. And there we are, we're on um, 9.0.5. Uh, great, um, one of the last commands um, that you can do, if you can see down here on the optional options, uh, here is apt modernize sources. And let's run that quickly. Rewrite two sources, yes. There we go, so that's modernized the sources. And if we then go over to um, the actual machine, uh, the actual host with the browser, so we just refresh that and log in here again. You can also see immediately that it says Proxmox virtual environment 9.0.5. Okay, so that's about it. Um, obviously, if you are doing this um, and you have more than one node, you would want to go through and do this on every node within your cluster and uh, juggle your virtual machines and um, LXC clusters, sorry, LXC containers around wherever um, to avoid uh, downtime and, uh, and any hassle from reboots. Um, but um, let's leave it there. So thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope this has been useful and please like and subscribe if that is the case. Otherwise, catch you next time. Thanks. Bye now.